Zach Stone here with electricalpereview.com. In this video, we're gonna do a problem together of a single phase transmission line solving for inductance and inductive reactance. Ready? The problem says, a 12 mile single phase 60 hertz transmission line has a conductor spacing of five feet. Determine the A, line to neutral inductance, B, the line to neutral inductive reactance, C, the total inductance, and D, the total inductive reactance, if the radius of each conductor is 0.2 inches. So over here on the left, let's fill in the values from the problem. We have a conductor spacing of five feet, a radius of 0.2 inches, and our total length from here all the way to here is L equals 12 miles. All right, so if we're gonna to wanna to solve for the inductance, we're gonna to need to know the DEQ and the GMR of this transmission line. The DEQ is easy. For a single phase transmission line, that's just the difference between the hot and neutral conductor. The GMR for a solid conductor is pretty easy to calculate as well. We can calculate it using the formula, GMR equals 0.7788 times the radius. In this case, our radius is 0 0.2 inches. All right, let's enter these values in the calculator. 0 0.7788 times 0.2 inches gives us a value of 0 0.1556 inches for the GMR of the conductor. All right, now that I got that value, let's go ahead and calculate the inductance. Now for single phase transmission line, there's actually two different values for inductance and inductive reactance. You have what's known as the line to neutral value, also called the average value or the one-way value. And that's gonna be the inductance from here to the load. And we can solve for that using this formula here. So let's go ahead and solve for A, which is just the line to neutral inductance. So the inductance L is going to equal mu naught, which we'll get from our calculator, divided by two pi times the natural log of the DEQ, which for single phase transmission line is just our distance, which is five feet divided by the GMR, which we found to be right here, 0 0.1576 inches. Now I'll notice I left a little bit of space here. This is a ratio. It's a unitless ratio. So whatever units I have on top has to equal the units on the bottom or vice versa so that the units cancel. Because we've got feet on top and inches on bottom, we need to convert either the feet to inches or the inches to feet that way this results in a unitless ratio. So to do that, I'm just gonna multiply five feet by 12 inches per one foot so that my feet on bottom cancel with my feet on top. I'll be left with inches, and then my inches on the top are gonna to cancel with my inches on bottom. And of course, this is in the units of Henry's per meter. All right, in the calculator, I'm gonna call the fraction sign. Now to get mu naught, I can just go to my constants menu. It's really easy. I'm gonna hit the second button, left parentheses. There's a long list of constants. Mu naught is at the bottom. Instead of scrolling all the way down, I can save time by just pressing the up key twice. So there's mu naught divided by two pi times the natural log of fraction sign five feet times 12 inches per foot divided by, I'm gonna use the second answer button to use that last value of GMR that's stored in our calculator. And then the next thing I'm gonna do before I write that down is I'm just gonna change my mode to scientific, which is pretty helpful when we're dealing with transmission lines since we're dealing with really small numbers. So our answer is going to be the line to neutral inductance is 1.19, 1 times 10 to the negative six, 
and we're still in the units of henries per meter. Now, I want to get rid of these meters on bottom, so I'm left with just henries. But my total length of the transmission line, 12 miles, is in miles. So to get rid of per meters, I'm going to have to convert meters to feet, and then feet to miles, and then I can finally multiply by my total transmission line length of 12 miles. Let's try it. So the first thing I'm going to multiply is a fraction. If I've got meters on bottom, I'm going to use meters on top so they cancel. And I've got one meter on top equals 3.281 feet. All right, next, I want to get rid of these feet. And I want to go from feet to miles. So feet on bottom to cancel, I need feet on top. I know that I've got 5,280 feet for every one mile. And then last, to get rid of miles on bottom, we're just gonna multiply by our total transmission line length of 12 miles. So times 12 miles. All right, a quick unit check to make sure all of our units are where we need them to be so that everything cancels nicely. I've got meters on bottom canceled with meters on top. Great. Feet on bottom canceled with feet on top. Perfect. Miles on bottom canceled with miles on top. That means when I run this through my calculator, I'm going to be left with just inductance in the unit of Henry's. All right, so in the calculator, I'm going to do answer times. So I've got this value already in the calculator. And then on top, I've got 5,280 times 12, and then on bottom, I just have divide by 3.281, enter. All right, our line to neutral inductance, L, is equal to, that looks like about 2.3 times 10 to the negative 2, or we can make it 10 to the negative 3 to work with millihenries. So I'm going to say 23.0 millihenries, or 23 times 10 to the negative 3 henries. And that's going to be our answer for part A. All right, next, for part B, if I want to go from 23 millihenries to reactants in ohms, specifically inductive reactants, all I have to multiply my inductance by is 2 pi times the frequency. So let's try that. Inductive reactants, x of L, equals 2 pi times our frequency of 60 hertz times our line to neutral inductance of 23.0 millihenries. All right, back to the calculator. I'm going to use the multiply button, so I've got answer times. The last answer is my 23 millihenries, right? Or 2.3 times 10 to the negative 2 henries. So times 2 pi times 60 hertz. And that's going to give us 8.67 ohms times 10 to the 0. Anything to the 0 power is 1. So our inductive reactants is 8.67 ohms. And that is our answer for part B. All right, remember at the start of this video, I said that there's actually two different values for inductance and inductive reactants when we're dealing with a single phase transmission line. We've got the line to neutral value, which is just the value of one conductor up to the load, also known as the average, also known as the one-way value. But we can also calculate the total inductive reactance or the total inductance. And all that is is the total inductance from the hot to the load and through the neutral back to the power source. So if we want to calculate that, we've got to figure out how do I add up these two inductors in series? Well, it's pretty simple. For a series inductor circuit, or for two inductors in series, I can say the equivalent inductance, LEQ, 
is going to be L plus L. Or we can simplify that. Instead of L plus L, we can just say 2 times L. So for C, if I want to calculate the total inductance, all I need to do is multiply the line to neutral value by 2 to get this total amount in our single phase circuit. So our line to neutral amount right here was 23.0 millihenries. I'm just going to multiply this by 2. So the L equivalent or the total equivalent inductance in our circuit, I'm going to go back to my calculator. I'm going to scroll up until I find my inductance right there. I'm going to bring it back down and I'm just going to multiply by 2. So that looks like 4. Point, we'll say 4.6 times 10 to the negative 2 or if we want to stay in the units of millihenries for consistency, we can just call that 46 millihenries. All I've done is just multiply this value by 2. So this is our answer for C. If you had to do this from the very beginning, if the problem didn't ask for the line to neutral value first, to calculate the total round trip inductance, again, all we're doing is adding these two inductors in series, all we would have to do is just multiply this entire formula by 2 in order to get our total amount. All right, D, I know my total round trip inductance for the single phase transmission line. Let's calculate the total inductive reactance. So I can do it two separate ways. I can use the same formula we used before, 2 pi f times L gives us X of L, right? 2 pi f times our inductance in Henry's gives us inductive reactance in ohms. Or, since I already have my inductive reactance line to neutral, I can also multiply that by 2 to get the total amount. It's the same thing again as adding my X of L with X of L. Alright, let's try it both ways to compare. So the first way is I'm just going to multiply this value by 2. So 8.67 ohms times 2. I'm going to call this the total equivalent inductive reactants. Again, back my calculator. I'm just looking for this value right here, 8.67. It's right here. I highlight it. I press enter to bring it back down. Multiply that number by 2. This time I have times 10 to the 1. That's the same thing as times 10, right? So that's about 17.3 ohms, which is going to be the answer for D. The other way we could do it is use the same formula as before. Inductive reactance equals 2 pi f times our inductance. So let's try, try it that way as well. So to do it quickly, I'm just going to find this value right here, my 46 millihenries in my calculator. 46 millihenries or 4.6 times 10 to the negative 2. And I'm going to multiply by 2 pi f. So times 2 pi f. And f, of course, in the United States is always going to be 60 hertz. Let's see, we get the same value of 1.7 times 10 to the 1, which of course is going to be 17.3 ohms. And that is the answer for D. Alright, that's it for single phase transmission lines, solving for the line to neutral inductance, the line to neutral reactance by converting the inductance from Henry's to ohms, and then the total round trip single phase inductance and inductive reactance by just multiplying these two values by 2 since inductors and inductive reactants both sum in series.